Smoke Perp, also known as the biggest fall off the rap game has ever had. But why is that? Why did he fall off harder than any other SoundCloud rapper during the era? And why did he end up becoming the big time joke that he is now? I'm a motherfucking stoner. I'm a motherfucking boner. Well, we can only find that out when we look into the story of Smoke Perp. Omar Jeffrey Pinero was born May 15, 1997 in Chicago, Illinois, staying there for about four years before the family then moved to Florida where he would spend the rest of his childhood. There's not really a whole lot known about Smoke Perp's early life, probably due to the fact that it wasn't that exciting. He was just your average kid growing up in the early 2000s, playing Pokemon, listening to rap music by the likes of 50 Cent and the rest of G Unit, and just living life. And when it came to his school life, it was pretty well the same way. He described himself as a quiet kid that would hang out with a bunch of different groups of people and never really got into trouble. Well, at least not until he got to high school, then he would start to get into a lot of trouble. But even though Perp was never the type of kid who would look for attention in school, it was clear that he was seeking attention from other sources because he would get online, start his own Vine account, and even start to create his own beats at the age of 14. Now when it comes to his Vine account, there's no real way to know exactly how popular he was on there number wise because the entire app was taken down in 2017, meaning that you can't really go back and check. But it seems like it gained him enough popularity in the local area for people to know who he was once he started rapping. Because once he started making beats, he realized almost immediately that they weren't really that good, and he already had somewhat of a knack for freestyling, or at least he thought he did, making the Pringles rap, which I'll show you right here. You know I be... We also have the laugh my f***ing ass off freestyle, which is pretty similar to the Pringles one, but maybe a little bit better. I'm not really sure if you can actually gauge the quality of these early tracks. Once he began to rap on his own beats, he would go under the name Young West, before then changing it to Young Vegas, before then finally deciding on Smoke Perp after he changed his beat making Instagram that was called 808 to Smoke Perp. There's no real meaning behind this name, besides one time he said that he smoked a lot of perp, and that's the reason that he called himself that, but he was 14 years old so that's probably not true he would also go on to say on the no jumper podcast that he wanted to change his name again because he thought smoke perp was too similar to space ghost perp and he wanted to change his name to Lil water but that never stuck and he remained smoke perp even to this day although if you look into soundcloud now it seems like he's trying to rebrand to just perp taking the smoke off of it which is even more generic than smoke perp so i'm not really sure why he's trying to do that and if you're wondering about the name little home invasion nobody ever called him that i don't know where that came from he would eventually ditch youtube as the main place to upload his music discovering soundcloud and up uploading a song on there in early 2015, although at this point we can no longer find it because he ended up deleting it only a couple weeks after it came out. He would also release a snippet for a track known as Money Counter, which didn't release for a full another year after this point, but the snippet actually ended up doing some numbers on Vine and gaining him a little bit more attention. And we also have one final thing that Smoke Perp released on his SoundCloud before then deleting it and starting off his career proper, and that was a mixtape called In Xanax We Trust, which I'm not sure if it ever came out officially or only got teased, but either way, it's not up anymore. So with all the rest of that music wiped off his SoundCloud, his first official song that most people would point to as his first actual outing was the song Samsung Jumping, which didn't initially do numbers, but after he started to pick up traction with some other songs, it began to get popularity as well. At this point, you can tell that Smoke Perp was trying to find himself musically, he was making super ignorant rap, which a lot of people weren't gelling with at the time, but luckily for him, he was able to meet another underground rapper in the scene, known as Lil Ominous. The two would almost immediately become friends and start going to the studio together, recording the track It's Nothing, and filming an entire music video for it as well that came out in late 2015. Being the first time that people actually saw Smoke Perp in the flesh, and were finally able to put a face alongside the music that he was creating, but at this point he only really had like one song out, so it really wasn't that serious. But it was the next track that he would drop that would really start to gain him attention in the underground scene, and that track was known as Love Off a Lick featuring XXXTentacion. Now if you've already seen my Scheme as a Slump God video, you know that X already had a lot of buzz in the scene by late 2015. He already had two projects under his belt with the two volumes of members only that were out at that point. He was doing shows all over Florida, forming connections with people like Denzel Curry, and really making a lot of noise. But at the same time, it wasn't too common for X to drop a feature with somebody outside of his own group, so when he did a feature with Smoke Perp, an artist that people had basically never heard of before, as well as X sharing a snippet of the track on his own Twitter, it would help to blow both Smoke Perp and the song up, basically overnight. 
although the Twitter snippet did get more numbers than the actual song on SoundCloud, but either way, I don't think Smoke Perp was complaining. And around this very same time, Little Ominous would introduce Smoke Perp to Chief Gazzy, also known as Lil Pump, and together they would start to create music as well. It really can't be understated just how much of an effect Little Ominous actually had on Smoke Perp and Little Pump's early career. He was able to find them connections with people outside of state, he was able to get them collaborations that really helped to boost their careers, and at the same time he was working as a promoter for a local club, so he was able to book them their first ever show. So after Perp dropped that first song, Live Off a of Lick, it seemed like SoundCloud was blessing basically everything he put out, and his very next track, known as Ski Mass, would be an even bigger hit, gaining 100,000 plays on SoundCloud in a couple weeks. And with his prior song, Samsung Jumping, also going on to get many plays on SoundCloud, he decided to compile all the tracks that he had out already with one new track on his first official mixtape, known as Lick Season. And he would finally end off the year with one more track called Pole, featuring the artist Swag Hollywood, who of course Lil Ominous had actually introduced Perp to, helping him to gain more attention in the LA scene on top of the already thriving Miami scene. It was around this time that Smoke Perp officially dropped out of school for good, as he had already been kicked out of two prior schools before this point and was basically on his last chance. But after Ski Mask started to do numbers online and bring unwanted attention to the school, they thought it was better to kick him out once and for all, leaving him without his grade 12 education, basically leaving him with no other option but to become a pop and rapper, which luckily for him wouldn't be too far off because he kept consistently dropping songs and videos that would help him blow up even further in Miami and eventually the main screen. Once 2016 rolled around, Perp got off to a strong start by dropping the Little Pump featured track called Johnny on SoundCloud, before then officially dropping a video for Money Counter, which now also featured a verse from Lil Pump. You can definitely hate on these boys for a bunch of different reasons, but one thing you can't say is that they're not loyal to each other, because Smoke Perp definitely helped to get Lil Pump's career off to his start. And even after Lil Pump completely surpassed Smoke Perp in popularity, they still continued to work together and help each other's careers, so it is kind of nice to see two rappers who pop off together stay close friends even to this day. After that, Smoke Perp ended up dropping a music video for his track By My Lonely on Elevator, which of course was a pretty big deal for any underground rapper at the time, and Lil Ominous was the one who actually formed that connection for both Pump and Perp. After By My Lonely came the next track by Smoke Perp, known as Walk Hard, which became his biggest song to date, and then after that, he would drop another song actually called Little Home Invasion, so maybe this is where the nickname came from. But it wasn't until the release of his next music video that he would finally gain widespread appeal, and this was because it was actually directed by Cole Bennett. Now at this point Lyrical Lemonade was still quite a bit smaller than it would become in the following years, but they already had gained some attention for working with Famous Dex as well as putting out the music video for Warhol SS's song NASCAR, so combining that with Smoke Perp's already pretty big numbers on SoundCloud made sure that the video was going to be an overnight success. And this is also the first time that the world really got to get introduced to Little Pump. I mean he already had a couple songs before this point and was somewhat known within the Miami scene, but after everybody saw him putting guns in his mouth, acting crazy, and overall just giving them a reason to pay attention to him, he started to become a star. And of course Lil Ominous was there as well, as he's actually the one who got all the guns for the music video shoot, but at this point Smoke Perp was blowing up, Little Pump was getting more fame as well, and all they wanted to do was do more drugs, make more money, and act more crazy, and since Ominous didn't really gel with that, and didn't want a 16 year old cousin doing that many Xanax, they started to have a little bit of a strained relationship. And immediately after Ski Mask came out and started doing numbers, Smoke Perp would go on to help Little Pump with his next track, Elementary. He already had one song out at the time that had a music video called Little Pump that was doing pretty well, but Elementary became an even bigger hit. Immediately after those videos came out, they started doing bigger and bigger venues, with Smoke Perp eventually dropping his next mixtape called Lick Season 2, which had another feature from Lil Pump on the track Kilo. And of course, just like any other clouded rapper at the time, Smoke Perp would fly out to Los Angeles to meet up with No Jumper and record his iconic interview, which helped push him even farther into the scene. And this connection would eventually lead to the first ever No Jumper tour, which Lil Pump and Smoke Perp would actually headline, and then immediately after that, they did a very rare Lyrical Lemonade interview where they would talk about Lil Ominous, their connection, and basically just tell the world exactly who they were. It is Smoke and Perp, aka Lil Water, you know how the f*** we coming, shout out Cole Bennett, shout out Lyrical Lemonade, man. Shout out Lyrical Lemonade, man, you know how we rockin'. I feel like, you know what I'm saying, all my diamonds are competing, you know what f***ing time it is, man. And immediately after that, Smoke Perp would head on his first ever tour called When the Lane Runs Out, alongside Fat Nick and Little Peep, and he basically remained on tour right until 2017. And while he was on this tour, he would record a song with Little Peep called Smoke Perp Off a Bean, as well as recording his next mixtape called Up Now, F*** Next. Which had two very big features from the likes of Xavier Wolf and Fat Nick, with Fat Nick appearing on the track known as Shoot, and Xavier Wolf appearing on the track 
Marcus Swisher, which would actually get a music video on Lyrical Lemonade the very next year. And basically immediately after Smoke Perp got off the Lil Peep tour, he ended up going on another tour with No Jumper and Little Pump, which actually ended up being another breakout moment for the two of them, because Adam-22 basically ended up recording the entire thing, showing the world just how ignorant and drugged out Smoke Perp and Little Pump really were. However, this tour was basically responsible for severing the connection between Lil Ominous and Smoke Perp, because basically Ominous wasn't very happy with Perp bringing Pump on this tour, getting him more addicted to Xanax, letting him sleep with older women, and just overall ruining his life. Even though he was making a lot of money, I mean, you gotta keep in mind, a little pump was like 16 years old. We all sat there and watched the blow up a little pump, thinking it was really cool that he was going on tour, making all this money, being with girls, but at the same time, he definitely did some permanent brain damage by doing so many Xanax on that tour, and definitely some of the older members of the tour should have taken better care of him. I was underage, so how you gonna f the same girls that I was f***ing when I was 16? Yes way, yes way. Yes way. But either way, Smoke Perp and Little Pump have basically done everything they could in the underground at this point, and they wanted to move to Atlanta to sign a big time deal and possibly make their way into the mainstream. And immediately after Smoke Perp got there, he ended up dropping his next big hit called Glock in My Benz, which ended up becoming such a big hit that he would be noticed by Interscope and Alamo Entertainment, who ended up signing him to a record deal. But funnily enough, even though Glock in My Benz was the initial song that caught their attention, it was actually the unreleased track, Audi, that convinced them to sign Smoke Perp in the first place. Perp ended up showing this song to the CEO of Alamo Entertainment in a private session, and immediately after he heard it, he knew it was going to be a big hit, so he decided to start filming a music video for it that would premiere on World Star later that year. And he would also begin to work on his first official mixtape with label backing known as Dead Star, which would basically become the height of his career in the coming year. And immediately, it seemed like this record deal was a dream come true. Smoke Perp got right to work making multiple songs, he was able to get alongside Travis Scott and pretend that he was signing to Cactus Jack, which got him a lot more attention. Who are you? Man, I just took a Zan. Y'all trying to make me take another another Zan? <laughs> He was working with bigger and better producers, getting a lot of attention on Instagram, and it seemed like Smoke Perp was going to be the next big star that was going to last for years and years, but unfortunately, everything started to go downhill after Audi released. I mean, don't get me wrong, this track was definitely massive. It gained like 60 million views on YouTube over the course of a couple years, and it also went platinum in 2020, so it was a big hit for Smoke Perp, and then after that, he ended up dropping Dead Star, which didn't really sell that well in its first week, but it did end up charting at number 42 on the Billboard Hot 100, which wasn't too bad for somebody who was freshly in the mainstream, and it seemed like Smoke Perp was going up and up and up. He immediately started to get interviews on Montreality as well as with Nardwired, where he would announce that he actually had three more upcoming projects called Bless Your Trap, Lost in Space, and of course, Dead Star Part 2. And while he had all this new music on the way, the video for Fingers Blue featuring Travis Scott ended up doing numbers as well. It never really got as big as Audi, and none of his songs ever really surpassed Audi, but they were still doing pretty well. Now at this point, you can definitely tell that Smoke Perp wanted to drop music consistently, Basically, everybody that blew up in the SoundCloud scene got big by dropping non-stop music, but once you sign to a label, they're never going to let you drop music back to back, so he had to wait longer between releases. Which definitely isn't a good thing for somebody like Smoke Perp, who doesn't have a whole lot of lyrical substance, because nobody's going to wait around for his music, so he has no choice but to drop constantly and try to keep people's attention, and if he doesn't, people are going to forget about him and start focusing on the next big upcoming SoundCloud rapper. So Smoke Perp had to drop fast, and luckily for him, he was able to drop Bless Your Trap only a couple months after his first album, which also did pretty well, actually premiering at number 40 on the Billboard this time. And one of the tracks off this album called Do Not Disturb actually ended up going platinum, giving Smoke Perp his second big mainstream hit within only about six months of getting signed. However, there was one big factor that was starting to affect Smoke Perp's career around this time, and that's the fact that Little Pump was getting bigger and bigger, eventually overshadowing Smoke Perp altogether and making him look like a sidekick, even though he was the one that initially got Little Pump into rapping in the first place. Which was made even more evident when Smoke Perp and Little Pump ended up dropping the song Nephew, which became Smoke Perp's biggest hit, but at the same time, most people were paying attention to Little Pump when the music video dropped and not really Smoke Perp. And overall, it doesn't really matter. I mean, I don't think Smoke Perp really cared that Little Pump got bigger than him, but it was more the personality change that took place after Pump got bigger than Perp that really started to affect his career. Because one thing that people overlook about early Smoke Perp is that he actually seemed to be quite humble in his early career. He was pretty soft-spoken during the No Jumper interview, and even on the Nardwired interview, he wasn't screaming his head off, going crazy and yelling. He seemed like he was more mature than Lil Pump, and really was only putting on a persona when he was on Instagram. Um, respect women. Pump, let's get out!
Jet ski. Scared. Wake up. Wake up. But the thing is, it seems like after Little Pump got big for being so ignorant, it seems like Smoke Perp wanted to copy him and start doing the same thing, which never really worked out for him. It actually got him into more trouble than anything. Because first of all, he was basically the one that started that whole meme of J. Cole, because at one of his concerts, the entire audience started chanting J. Cole, and Smoke Perp joined along, and then after that, Little Pump and J. Cole got into that whole beef, which wasn't actually a bad thing, because it actually got Little Pump more attention once his career started to go downhill, but at the same time, Smoke Perp seemed like he was riding way too high off of that beef, and started a beef with another conscious rapper known as Russ. Now, don't get me wrong, Smoke Perp definitely has a reason to be mad at Russ, because basically the day after Lil Peep passed away, Russ would wear a shirt that said, how much Xanax and lean do you have to take before before you realize that you're an idiot, which was definitely disrespectful and bad timing. But at the same time, Smoke Perp should have realized that Russ wasn't really somebody to mess with because he was often known for getting people beat up that disrespect to him. This is gonna come and be something, the internet, there's gonna be response, whatever, but uh, I had that conversation with, 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 with all the people involved with this, you know, with Smoke Perp, with Adam, and I'm a cool and tell my truth that they have a problem with it, they have a problem with it, but I tell my truth, uh, I'm 22 with the blogger, but what did, he, what did he have to do with that? Uh, nothing with the smoke perp shit, but oh, yeah, got it. you were just, you were, you're in your platform irresponsibly. Adam. Yeah, so I don't live in a world where like, you're a grown ass man. If you're talking shit about another grown ass man, you're using your platform. Like I said, you're mobilizing your army, you're using your platform negatively towards stones in my castle. If you get confirmed about it, whether it me or anyone else there should be zero surprise in your head and then smoke perp would actually change his profile picture on instagram to rest his sister which was definitely disrespectful but all that internet tough guy stuff definitely came back to bite him in the butt because he ended up doing a show in germany alongside russ where russ's goons would kick smoke perp backstage beat him up and film the entire interaction and for one reason or another, this basically became the end of Smoke Perp's initial wave because after he got beat up by Russ, everybody started clowning on him and absolutely nobody could take him seriously anymore. And I know a lot of people are going to ask why this was such a big deal because after all, Wi-Fi's funeral ended up getting beat up on the revenge tour, X got punched in the face, Ski Mask got jumped one time at a show. But the reason this affected Smoke Perp so much is because he got beat up by Russ and Russ was seen as the most corny rapper of all time during 2017 so getting jumped and beat up by somebody like that was definitely definitely embarrassing for him. But while that was the big outside factor that affected Smoke Perp's career, the big inside factor was that Alamo ended up signing another big SoundCloud superstar around the same time as Smoke Perp, known as Comethazine. Now initially this really doesn't seem like that big of a deal, I mean Alamo is a big record company that signs a lot of artists a year, but it seems like on the inside of things, Comethazine and Smoke Perp were fighting for attention from the label. Because Smoke Perp was initially given a lot of attention by the label when he first got signed, but it seemed like after he fell deeper and deeper into drug use, started to make a fool of himself online, and overall just became a liability to the label, they would start to shift their attention over to Comethazine, and it seems like after that, they basically shelved Smoke Perp. And another factor that probably led Smoke Perp to be shelved by his label was that he was being seen as a little pump sidekick around the time, and they probably didn't feel like putting a whole bunch of money into an artist that was only seen as a sidekick to another artist that was signed to an entirely different label. So so from a business aspect, it probably made a whole lot more sense to put money into somebody like Comethazine who was brand new and they could do whatever they wanted with his persona and his output on the internet instead of somebody like Smoke Perp who was already known for being a clown. So at that point, the label basically stopped putting money into him and Smoke Perp would have to fund his own career right out of his own pockets. I mean, it wasn't all bad because he did manage to land himself on the 2018 XXL freshman list, which was a pretty big deal at the time. But besides that, his music output in 2018 was pretty slow and a lot of people were left wondering wondering what was Smoke Perp going to do next. But what people didn't realize is behind the scenes, Smoke Perp was actually picking up a pretty big writing bag for writing the song I Love It by Little Pump and Kanye West that actually went on to hit number 6 on the Billboard Hot 100, as well as becoming Little Pump's second biggest hit right behind Gucci Gang, which actually gave Smoke Perp a good idea to try to market his music by calling out Little Pump on Instagram, basically saying that he wrote Gucci Gang, I Love It, and every other big song Little Pump had ever done. Man, listen, I'm not playing with you no more. I need all my money, all my royalties, man. I need all my money, nigga. Gucci Gang, nigga, that was my song, nigga. I gave you that song. I gave you your first big hit, boy. Boy, you better stop playing, nigga. I wrote and produced all your first songs, nigga. What you talking about, nigga? 
Gay. Now this didn't really gain him any attention whatsoever because at this point people didn't really care about Little Pump and they definitely didn't care about Smoke Perp anymore so there was no real way that he was going to be able to gain their attention back unless he did something really big. However he did manage to land himself another platinum hit when he appeared on the Dreamville album alongside G.I.D. and a couple other big rappers on the song Costa Rica so Smoke Perp definitely still had a couple of hits under his belt but for the most part his mainstream appeal was starting to fade away. But it was what Smoke Perp did next that actually became his biggest and most iconic moment during his entire career because he went on Tim Westwood's podcast and ended up dropping a one hour freestyle which was not good. Definitely not good. Definitely the worst thing that anybody had ever heard before when it came to hip hop. But initially this didn't cause Smoke Perp any problems because nobody was really paying attention to him around the time, so besides a couple comments making fun of him, it wasn't really going viral until a year later. After that, Smoke Perp ended up dropping his Last Planet EP, which mostly went unnoticed by the general public besides one song called Double featuring Annalie Chopper, which surprisingly became a sleeper hit and went on to get 50 million views on YouTube in the coming years. And I remember actually listening to Smoke Perp around this time, thinking that he might make a big comeback because the next song that he put out called Dirty Dirty featuring a little skies also was a pretty big hit and it seems like he had the potential to make a comeback but what we didn't realize at the time is there was actually a lot going on behind the scenes that was causing Smoke Perp's career to go in a bad direction. First of all, his drug addiction was getting so bad that he had to quit Xanax, and eventually he started doing Percocets to try to replace the Xanax, putting him in an even worse spot than before. His team actually tried to put him in rehab, but he ended up running away after only one week, and after that, his label wasn't willing to put any more money into Dead Star 2, so Smoke Perp actually had to pay $2 million out of his own pocket to fund the album. And a big chunk of this money actually went towards a Kanye West feature, which unfortunately never ended up going through. It was recorded, but Kanye ended up going into this whole spiritual arc where he didn't want to swear in any of his music, so the verse that he gave to Perp couldn't be used anymore, leaving Smoke Perp $500,000 in the hole with absolutely nothing to show for it. Perp would try his absolute hardest to promote the album by going on No Jumper a second time, but at this point it was too late. The album came out, didn't sell that well, half of it was actually leaked before it ever released, and at this point it seemed like Smoke Perp was completely washed up. Oh, and another fun fact, if you're wondering why Smoke Perp seems so mad at 6 9 during this interview, it's actually because he tried to hit on Sarah Molina, which is 6 9s baby mother, and she turned him down, so for some reason he got mad at 6 9 and made a diss track called Duck. So, not really that important in the grand scheme of things, but definitely funny. Little Perp. It's corny, bro. Curved and corny. At this point with Smoke Perp's solo career going into the toilet, it seems like he was trying to sign other artists and try to be a manager figure to them. He ended up signing one guy named Codeine Chris, who he actually did a song with, and he also got him a song with Lil Xan. And the funny thing about this guy is that I think he was actually just a drug dealer that was selling drugs to Xan and Perp, and they decided to sign him as an actual artist. But surprisingly, his music actually isn't that bad. You should check it out if you haven't. And around the same time, Smoke Perp was started to date Noah Cyrus, which if you didn't know, actually dated Lil Xan as well. So it seems like once you start to fall off as a rapper, you start to date Noah Cyrus. Okay, my bad. That's kind of mean, actually. Noah Cyrus is actually pretty good looking, I'm not gonna lie. And her and Smoke Perp seemed to make each other happy. And as 2020 rolled on, it seemed like Smoke Perp was trying his best to promote an upcoming album known as Florida Jet, which was supposed to be his big comeback. It actually had a feature from Jack Harlow, and it seemed pretty promising right from the offset. But unfortunately, as we already know, Smoke Perp really isn't the type of artist that can sell an entire album all on his own. He's kind of like Little Pumper 6ix9ine, where a lot of people pay attention when he releases a single, but when he does an actual album, nobody really listens. There was one song off this project called Off My Chest featuring Lil Pump that did pretty well, but once again, Smoke Perp really only does well when he's beside Lil Pump or Little Skies or Little Xan or some other SoundCloud rapper. And he tried his absolute hardest to position this album as something to listen to. He would go live with Lil Pump a couple times, record a couple different snippets and release them on Instagram, and it seemed like people were hyped, but when the project actually came out, it only ended up selling a stunning 4.5 thousand copies, which is definitely terrible, and at that point, Smoke Perp had officially coined the term going triple plastic. And as soon as news hit that Smoke Perp had sold such a small amount of copies, people started clowning on his old freestyle as well, and everybody was basically making fun of Smoke Perp for a solid month. So at this point, Smoke Perp basically went from being a rapper that nobody cared about anymore to the poster boy for falling off as a SoundCloud rapper, with people joking about his sales, making fun of his freestyle, and just overall making fun of everything he was doing. In a way, it kind of is a good thing, because I feel like if Smoke Perp never had this moment, people would have completely forgot about him, like somebody like 
like Blockboy JB or Bexy or anybody like that. But at the same time, it can't feel good to have the entire internet making fun of you. Smoke Perp did try to recover a little bit by releasing a couple more singles and eventually releasing a whole nother album in 2021. But after that, it seemed like he basically gave up on music altogether. And if it couldn't get any worse for him, after the pandemic was finally over, he ended up going back on tour in 2021 and basically nobody showed up whatsoever. He ended up having this viral moment where only five people showed up in his audience, which was definitely embarrassing for him as well. And even worse than that, Smoke Perp wouldn't even go out and perform for the five people in his audience, leading them to all make videos calling him out and saying that they paid to be there. And even if nobody showed up, then Smoke Perp should have came out and performed anyways. So not only was he embarrassed for nobody showing up in his audience, but even worse, his actual fans thought he was a dickhead now. And the actual reason that nobody showed up at that point is because apparently Smoke Perp would always show up to his shows very late, about 40 minutes after he was supposed to get on stage. And when he finally did show up, he would never perform his own music. He would always perform Little Pump and XXX Tentacion songs instead. He would do like three of them and then completely leave. So people just realized going to a Smoke Perp concert didn't really make sense for all the money that you had to pay. And at this point, that's basically the end of Smoke Perp. He really hasn't had any relevancy on the rap game in the last four years besides people making fun of what he did in 2020 and 2021. I mean, he's definitely still around, he still goes to Rolling Loud every year, he still goes to Summer Smash, and he's definitely still known as a SoundCloud rapper, but for the most part, he's basically been left as somebody that people just make YouTube videos on, talking about how he fell off and that he's a joke. And honestly, I really don't feel like it was Smoke Perp's fault. I mean, he's not a terrible guy or a bad person. His ego definitely got a little bit inflated once he got famous, and he cut off people like Little Ominous, which he shouldn't have done, but at the same time, all the drug use and everything else that went along with it definitely hurt his career as well. But one thing I can say is that I don't think a lot of people thought he would make it as far as he actually did, so you can't really fault him for that. I mean, he went from a kid who could basically not even rap in 2011 to one of the biggest stars in the world in 2018 to falling off in 2020, but A, he had like two solid years in the rap game where he was at the top, and most artists don't even get that, so we have to kind of give it to Smoke Perp. I mean, it definitely could be way, way worse. He could be Famous Dex or 6 9 where they can't even really walk around outside without people making fun of them or trying to attack them, so Smoke Perp definitely isn't the the biggest fall off of all time. It's just because when he finally did fall off, it happened in such a big way that everybody took notice. It wasn't a slow, sad fall to the bottom like somebody like Famous Dex. But you know what? I want to hear what you have to say. I want to know what you think is the biggest fall off in the game. Was it YBN Demir? Was it Famous Dex? Was it 6 9 Little Zan? Trippy Red? Who do you think it is? And definitely let me know who I should do a video on next because I kind of feel like I should cover some of the other big fall offs in the game to try to compare them to Smoke Per. But let me know what you think and what you want to see. But hey, hopefully you enjoyed enjoyed this video. I'm definitely trying to do a lot longer videos now because I see that people really like the half hour big deep dives into an artist where I talk about every aspect of their life. So if you like that, definitely like the video. Subscribe to the channel because I'm trying to work my way up to 15k. It would be super cool if both of these videos do well and if they do, I'll keep pushing more out and be more influenced to do more like this. But with all that said, thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe to the second channel too if you're so inclined. But besides that, Peace out. Oh yeah, and Smoke Purpose has started hanging out with Jack Doherty in like 2022. That's not really that important to the story, but I feel like people would have pointed it out if I didn't mention it. So there you go. Smoke Perp, Jack Doherty, Island Boys, Little Pump, Anthony Fantano, forever. Woo, bye. Doot-doot-doot-doot.